fire started good, but I mean, let's get on. People can start. Wait a second. Okay. Are we on? You're live. We're live. Hey guys, we're gonna get things up and running here. Um, give it a chance for everyone to uh, get on. Give us just another minute. So at the bottom where it says click for more. Oh, there we go. I just have to constantly hit refresh on it. But we're good to go, Brent. Okay. All right. You're coming in. Okay. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Tri-State Facebook Live broadcast. Today we have Jeff Sorensen here um, to talk about some new exciting things that are going on with Legacy Lodge and our um, Joplin location. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to send them in and we'll get them answered for you. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Brittany. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you might be uh, in the United States today. It's 70 sunny here at uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. and. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm Tom Brokaw. Uh, welcome to Studio 1A here at Rockefeller Center. Uh, actually, it's my broadcast debut, so I hope you're patient with me. Uh, but we'll have some fun. Um, yeah, my name is Jeff Swenson. I have a company called Swenson Realty Group, and I've been an entrepreneur and developer, uh, real estate developer in the Phoenix area for the better part of 30, 35 years. Uh, most of my experience has been involved in doing new residential development, um, higher end boutique kind of luxury properties and um, about two and a half years ago John Wilbur your illustrious CEO um, asked me to uh, join in helping to put a program together to essentially elevate the quality of the real estate facilities for uh, Tri-State and, and, and the associated companies across the country so we, we were working on putting that plan together and and as I learned, I have no background in trucking, but it was important to me to really understand, you know, how trucking worked, um, uh, the needs, and, and he walked me into this thing called the Driver's Lounge in Joplin, uh, in a building that was built in 1957, and it looked a little dark and furry to me, to be very honest with you, and so I said, this just can't work for drivers. There's gotta be a better experience, and, and so we put that plan in play, and uh, today I'd like to walk you through kind of the different facilities that we're working on, uh, both kind of take you through a, a walk down memory lane here for the last two and a half years, if you will, and then kind of looking forward what's coming up the next couple of years. So we'll start with the Joplin Terminal. Um, in, 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 the, in Joplin, if you haven't been there, we have 160 acres total, and I'll just kind of walk you through the, the Google Earth area here. There is a, uh, the gatehouse here. This happens to be the corporate office operations center. Uh, this is the original building on the property, built in 1957, now called the Legacy Lodge. Uh, here is what was always known as the driver's lot, parking area, and we're going to talk a little bit about parking today. I'm sure there's some questions. And then, of course, all the trailer parking up here. Here is the trailer shop, um, all the trailer repairs and fabrication that happened there. Tractor shop is over here for the repairs. This is the maintenance building on site. And then the uh, you know building that we no longer really use, but it's the old paint and tire shop. So that gives you a little flavor of what it was. This is December of 16. We did the uh, we did the office uh, corporate office and operations center in two parts. Uh, the front portion were all the dispatch and planners and safety and uh, most of those people work today is this area right here. That's what it looked like in December of 2016, and this is the transformation. And it was, you know, reasonably straightforward and simple. Um, a lot of paint, a lot of removing, you know, old things that just didn't look good anymore. Uh, new carpet, of course. We remodeled the bathrooms inside, conference rooms. We took all the individual offices, stripped out old wallpaper, things of that nature. You can kind of see here, you know, all the vertical blinds, things of that nature were gone. Uh, all the offices were kind of, it's actually all the original woodwork, but still, you know, looks good and was refreshed and new tops and carpet. And, and there, of course, is the lobby coming into the building. 
Uh, this happens to be the back section of the building. It's actually where we started in this one. Uh, some of you have had training in this room. Believe it or not, didn't look, uh, uh, doesn't look like that any longer, but this is the, uh, some old area of the office that wrapped around back. And this is what it looked like in August of 2016. So as you can see, we came in, gutted it out, a bunch of walls. We created a brand new break room and corporate kitchen, if you will, for events and entertaining and uh, you know employee events, of course, and, and drivers would use it. So they'd come in for training. This would be the break area. This just gives you a, a little sense of the quality that we were aiming to achieve in all of the facilities that we, that we do both past and, and future. Um, here's the training room. Uh, we initially put the training room in the office and as we've been growing and adding more trucks and drivers and all of that, um, we've, uh, we've now changed that up a little bit, but uh, this room still exists. This is Loudon, uh, Knoxville area. If you haven't been there, we do a lot of uh, work for Department of Energy up at Oak Ridge. Uh, Mark McDermott and his wife Twyla run that facility. And here's uh, Greater Knoxville right here. This is I-70, or excuse me, I-40 coming across. Our old facility was here in Harriman. Uh, it was very dated, very tight. Um, just wasn't working well for us. And this is the intersection coming on I-75 South down to Loudoun. And our building there is just off the Tennessee River on Watts Bar Lake. And um, this is the building that we leased. This is a lease facility. It's about 13,500 square feet on 14 acres. We came in, we fenced the entire property. We added a whole bunch of gravel and hard pack to surface. We added new cameras, we added new lights. Um, and then we took the building itself uh, which actually was in, in quite a significant level of disrepair. Um, painted the exterior of it, cleaned up the lot. This happens to be the back shop. And the, the shop, as you can see, the insulation was shot. It was just very dark and dirty and kind of nasty. This was the interior of the building. Um, you know, of course they had very spacious bathrooms, as you can see. Uh, all of that was gutted out and, and here's the transformation. So we came in, uh, obviously put up all the corrugated metal. We want everything to feel kind of industrial chic uh, and cool and just everything that we're doing has to have a bit of a vibe to it so that it just feels good. I think that's such an important investment in a company. And I know uh, John Wilber's philosophy is, is, is not building just a great trucking company, but it's building a really great company as a whole. And that's why so much of this is important in the, the work that we're doing. Um, this is also Loudon. We created our, this was our first driver center. So it's about 3,000 square feet. There's three bathrooms, uh, one men's, one women's with showers, locker room style, as you can see, um, nice quality. And then the club room um, with the kitchen and, you know, area to hang out and relax and TV and just enjoy it, right? So once again, kind of gives you just a sense of the quality that we're shooting there. And then came the, um, the Crown Jewel, the Legacy Lodge. And this was really embracing on the history of Tri-State as a company, you know. Founded back in, I believe, 1933. We have, you know, over 80 years of history here in this company. And it was a, a wink and a nod to the past and a, and a bright eye towards the future, really. And so um, uh, we debated at length where we wanted to put this new facility uh, that, that, that would be a lodge facility for all of you as drivers so that when you come in, you could pull in, it was easy, um, you know, bring out your laundry, bring some food in, come in, relax, hit the gym, use the media rooms, hit the locker room, uh, get freshened up and, and enjoy yourself. And that's what it was all about. So we used the 1957 built building on the property uh, and this building has changed dramatically over the years. It was the original shop. This was actually the overhead doors went into the shop and it was a small office and that's where uh, Tri-State kind of had its roots when it moved to this location on the east side of Joplin. And as you can see, the building was in pretty tough shape. Um, when we got there, there was uh, you know, just a, a nest of wiring up above and a lot of drop ceiling and it was musty and old and um, you know, carpet that just was shot and just nothing really looked good, so we gutted it. 
we just cleared it right out and this place is brand new ground up all of the uh, plumbing the underground plumbing is all new all the electrical is new all the HVAC is new we replaced all the skylights we've repainted the entire exterior of the building and um, and this was the plan uh, the good news is when you work in the small cities it doesn't doesn't take a lot of work with the uh, with the, the uh, uh, city in terms of approvals and whatnot we just needed a really good plan so you know quickly walking through about two-thirds of the building it's 10,000 feet total two-thirds of this building is designated towards the driver's lodge and then the other third is training okay and um, uh, at this area here I'll show you on another site plan it's going to be up the outdoor patio basically main club room here with the fireplace there's a couple of media rooms here to be able to walk in and you know kind of watch whatever you want on dish or connect your own device little business center with computer uh, uh, printer excuse me and fax uh, table to work on over there nice fitness room and you will see pictures of all this of course and then here's our kitchen laundry center over here this is the men's locker room women's locker room and then this leads down the hallway with a couple of guest bathrooms and the, and the training center on this end. So here's now the, the east end of the building as you come across from the office. Um, and the, the spirit of this was to create it like a campus, um, to really make everything feel connected from our operations center and main office to the, to the driver's lodge. We wanted all that to come together to kind of be seamless and one and you know almost felt like uh, one of the great college campuses you've walked across in the past uh, here's the transformation of that building and it we're, we're proud of it it came out super cool it's got all metal ceilings huge fireplace uh, we custom built this trailer kudos to uh, Nate and Pete and Mike and all the guys in the shop and the trailer shop built this uh, custom trailer table for us um, Locker rooms are over here, uh, fitness center there. Uh, I might note that we had a Scottsdale artist hand paint that uh, flag up there, which is really cool. Believe it or not, it's six feet tall by 10 feet wide. And, uh, and of course, because we do so much work with the military, um, it's, it's very apropos and, and we love it up there. Here's another shot looking across from the kitchen. Um, all of the light fixtures, the, the, the main light fixtures you'll see, were all handmade by our guys. Uh, and again, uh, you know, I have to acknowledge Brad Markley and, and, and uh, his team who all hand built those. Uh, we used old hand hidden barn beams and kind of created that cool look. This is the kitchen looking in, um, you know, big gas range. We put first class appliances in. Um, just. Try to make it as comfortable as any nice custom home you'd walk in, basically. Uh, there's another shot of the trailer table over there. You know, great bar. We've got billiards and ping pong and foosball and shuffleboard and, you know, all kinds of good things to keep you entertained and relaxed. There's the fitness center. A couple TVs in there. Uh, this is a shot of the men's locker room. And if you haven't been, you know, we encourage you to come on out when you have a chance and swing through. We, we hope you'll enjoy it, but um, it's all done, uh, you know, super nice finishes. Those are the shower rooms here on the left, uh, toilet rooms on the right. You know, we have it all stocked with towels and whatnot for you. This is the women's locker room. Each of them have their own kind of design um, decor and, and, uh, and feel. And this is the laundry center with four washers, four dryers all high quality and, and should point out you know the old industrial laundry carts you can pull them out throw your stuff in from from the dryer and be able to use that folding table at the end uh, both locker rooms have uh, individual lockers for if that a lock if you're working out um, this is the seating area over by the business center that we spoke of here's our large training room large training room sits 17 or 18 uh, and then the smaller training room sits about 14. And that's looking back towards the grease board and the televisions, of course. Okay, so any questions so far? Uh, Kip Kelly wants to know if uh, drivers can go fishing at the drop-on location. If the drivers can go fishing, you know, um, I think that's probably okay. 
Uh, there is a lake over behind the paint and tire shop, and uh, just be safe. We we have there's been a history of of uh, you know someone that had some problems over there. We actually lost one of our people years ago, uh, way way before we were involved. But just be very careful over there. It can drop off quickly, and and uh, so but by all means enjoy it. But don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, maybe not eat the fish. Good idea. Um, why uh, don't we have a freezer in the, leg in the Legacy Lounge? Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, the way that we bought those originally is they are separate refrigerators, separate freezer, and just with the room and everything that we're working with, we really didn't want it to be a storage space of sorts. And I know I've heard the comments since. Um, I don't know that we can do anything about changing it up at this point, but it's a fair question. and. And I apologize, we don't have one in there. We have some place to keep the rest of your stuff, but I don't have room for ice cream and frozen pizzas, unfortunately. Okay, anything else? We're good? All right, let's talk about parking for just a second. So here again is the, Le the, the Legacy Lodge. This area right now is under construction. Um, we've torn up, we're, we're in the process of basically revamping this entire area out here. Um, which was just a field of parking uh, looking out. We wanted to kind of clean it up, really um, give this crown jewel of appeal of the property as you came in. So this is going to be a patio in the center. I'm going to show you another illustration of it shortly with a grass area. And then along the north edge here will be angled parking. There'll be about 12 uh, bobtail parking spaces along the north edge. There will also be four spaces along here for tractor trailers. And then this entire lot is being all new asphalt. It's being reconfigured and designed. We've added a west entry over here to come in so that the flow of the truck traffic basically is coming in from the west side, coming out the east side, and then out the gate. Same here, you know, so everything is in, through off to the west, out to the trailers or whatever coming in here and then flowing back east to come out of the facility, okay? And then there's 18 spaces over here. Now, what's exciting about this is we made an application for a grant with the EPA back in June, and the good news is we've been notified that we are the winning recipient of that grant. We're working with a nonprofit that's, um, uh, you know, kind of a green, eco-friendly kind of uh, nonprofit organization in Kansas City, and they are processing it through with the EPA. And what that will do for us is we're going to be able to electrify all the parking slips. So we're going to have 24 parking slips across this property where each individual slip, you'll be able to plug in your, your uh, extension cord, connect up to shore power. And, you know, it, 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 I think all of the trucks today, or most of the trucks today, have shore power connections, so you'll be able to plug in. We're also working on... Um, uh, we're, we're, we're basically planning for the future is what we're doing, okay? That's the, I guess I'll leave it at that. We're planning for the future, but we're going to have the electric in with this grant coming in place, and, uh, and you will be able to, to uh, plug in your trucks. So here's the, the uh, site plan illustration, if you will. The patio coming out here will be in the center. On the, the north and south edge of the patio is going to be a open metal structure that will look just like the building. It'll have the same roof line. And these open metal structures under this one here will be, um, we are going to showcase uh, the 1947 white semi that Tri-State has had for years. It's fully restored. It's a beautiful truck if you haven't seen it. We're gonna showcase it over here. And then the 1947 matching trailer is going on that side. There'll be a, a, you know, access from the, from the driver's lot over here for all the trucks, uh, access in through the sidewalk into the door or the open garage doors for, you know, when weather's nice, that can all open up and just flow up to the patio. And then this is gonna be a grass activities area for, um, you know, horseshoes or uh, cornhole or, or whatever you'd like to do out there. And then of course the parking along the north edge. There's our truck if you haven't seen it, it's pretty cool. The 1947 white, and that is going to sit under that one covered structure. Uh, it'll be open all the way around the sides. It'll be lit up at night, and at the back side of it is going to be a gas barbecue center. 
So uh, you may take your food out there, grill up burgers or a steak or whatever sounds good, and, uh, and you're looking at that. And then in the center of the fire, or center of the uh, patio, is a fire pit with um, eight Adirondack chairs set around it. So it's going to be a, really, a, I think, a great space to be able to enjoy. There's the trailer going in on the other side. And then this is what the shore power stations look like. Um, they're up on a concrete pedestal. Um, you pull into the slip and pow, hook up. You're all good. Okay, so that's kind of the past. Uh, those, are all, those projects are all essentially done today with the exception of the patio and the, the grass area. We're working on that now, but we're, we're more excited about the things that are to come here uh, in the future. And I'll just talk about those briefly. Um, over the next couple of years, uh, the first location that we're going into is Crane. Uh, we have a facility out there that uh, r and had for a number of years, right up front at the Army Depot as you pull in on 231 and uh, 558 State Route, and we're building a brand new facility there. It'll be uh, four or five bays of shop space. It'll have a driver's center, just very similar to what we did in Loudoun. Um, same kind of quality. Um, and uh, um, uh, there's a possibility it's going to be easier access, that'll promise you. I, I can't tell you exactly how that's going to work yet, but there's going to be some really easy access and it's, and it's going to be a level site and we think you're going to like the changes. Um, Salt Lake City and Tooele, and I think I misspelled Tooele actually, um, sorry about that. Uh, but in Salt Lake, we just have a drop yard at this point that I think maybe 20, 25 trailers or so can be parked in there. Uh, we are looking at locations in the Tooele area off to the southwest of Salt Lake. Um, very easy to get in and out. It seems to be very convenient to a lot of the destinations and the customers that Tri-State are serving in the area. And so uh, that's, that's actively, um, we're on the hunt, so to speak, for that. Same with Arizona. We're doing a brand new corporate headquarters and terminal out here. It's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood, if you're familiar with Phoenix, of Interstate 10 and the Loop 303, which is the west side of Phoenix. Um, we'll probably have about a 40 acre plus or minus, 40, 60 acre, kind of similar campus, um, corporate office building, uh, maintenance facility, um, uh, a big driver's lodge, much like the Legacy Lodge will be in that building. Um, you know, the whole deal. So it's going to be, we're very excited about this one. We have a couple uh, uh, vacant sites in mind that we're, we're targeting at this point in time. Nothing is, is firm yet, but we'll, we'll have those plans and, and, and that announcement for you here in the near future. And then um, last but not least is, is Richmond Bluegrass Facility. Uh, again there we have a building of about, oh, 13, 14,000 square feet. Um, it, uh, it has some office facility in there. There is a driver center. Um, we are going to significantly upgrade that driver center. Very comparable with what we did in Loudoun, very comparable with what we're doing in, uh, um, in uh, Crane, and same kind of deal. So, and it also has, uh, I think, three or four bays of shop space out there. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of what it is. Um, you know, I, I just want to say from a personal standpoint, um, you know, to me, you guys are the heartbeat of this country. You are, are so valued in our mind, and I think that driver appreciation too often is lip service. Uh, and, and we really wanted to, my goal anyhow, in working with Tri-State as a company, was to do everything that I could to just basically make your life um, as, in work more enjoyable, plain and simple. That, that you had, that you knew we cared about how you lived on a daily basis, and when you came back to us as a company, wherever that might be around the country, that we were there to take care of you in the same way that you've taken care of us, and the way that you take care of all of the customers of this country. And so, you know, as a, as a young guy, I grew up in a small town in southern Minnesota. Uh, I've walked bean fields, I've washed cars and stocked plumbing parts, and I understand the value of hard work. And, and I know that's what you guys are doing on a daily basis. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, we appreciate all your effort. And uh, any any questions? Yeah, don't shut it down yet. We got questions. Oh, we got questions. Um, okay. So a lot of drivers are asking about the dog park. 
And yes. what's, what's the ETA on that? Uh, uh, quick, really quick, yeah. For all, all you dog lovers, uh, we are providing a solution in Joplin, and it's, uh, um, oh gosh, it, it'll be a pretty significant dog run. It's going to be over on the west side. I don't know if I can get back to that screen, but basically, it's over on the west side of the of the new the big lot. You know where I talked about the um, west entry coming in that goes out to the safe haven that drive coming in there. Big 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 park. Hey John, that's going to Whenever you move back and forth, it puts the camera out of, out of focus. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're, ma you're making Kip Kelly mad. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Kip. Um. Drivers want to know what are the chances that we would get a basketball court. You know, uh, I can't answer that because I'm not sure where we would put that. But if you're a basketball enthusiast and you really think you would use it, uh, send in your vote. Why don't we do that, huh? And we'll look into it. That that I can promise you, I'll look into it. Um, Jason Matthews wants to know when the, the barbecue will be ready to go. Uh, probably within the next month. We're pouring concrete as we speak. So, you know, somewhere around the next month. Okay, awesome. Sorry guys, I don't know why it got blurry all of a sudden. Uh oh. Having some technical difficulties. Let's just keep going with the questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that that's all that we have for for right now. Any plans for Champlain, New York? Uh, uh, yes. We ha we don't have anything definitive yet. There's been some conversation back and forth about the use of Champlain versus Plattsburgh, and um, I think things are going to kind of keep oriented towards the use of the Plattsburgh facility more than the Champlain facility, but uh, I can't speak with any authority on that uh, here today. Uh, Mary Valenzuela has kind of a question suggestion. She said, can we please place a time limit on how long to park in the four tractor trailer by the Legacy Lounge? It should be a last stop kind of parking before heading out instead of overnight parking. Is there something to get signage or something perhaps? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think uh, it, what I would encourage you on some of these, uh, remember I'm, I'm kind of real estate and facilities director, but not operations, so I try to keep my nose out of business that it doesn't belong. Um, so what I would encourage you is on, on something, a question like that, uh, send an email to Donnie Lester. Um, you know, Donnie it, it kind of handles a lot of that, and I, I think he's kind of the appropriate point person for that question. Uh, Matthew Palmer wants to know, are there any plans for the Houston yard other than a rented uh, drop yard space? None that I'm aware of. We have not talked about Houston at all. Okay. And I think, and I think we're good. Okay. No hey, questions? thanks everyone for uh, joining us today. Um, have a happy Thanksgiving. God bless you all. Be safe.